Now, money in. So let's discuss money in workflows. In this section, we'll discuss how to record revenue into QuickBooks Online, how to uh, use the right settings for sales related transactions, uh, what are the different entry points for entering sort of the same transaction, and uh, at the features in QuickBooks related to invoices and payments. Okay, so let's go through um, the sales settings and payment settings, setting up styles, importing styles, transaction types, payments, and the customer center. Okay, this is the whole money in section. So first of all, when you click on the gear button and then you click on sales, you're going to see all the settings related to sales. So you're going to see things like automatically apply credits. That way, if, uh, if you give a client a credit memo and you want that to automatically apply to the last open invoice, for example, or <clears throat> you know, copy estimates to invoices, you actually have to turn that on. Okay, in QuickBooks Desktop, you create an invoice and you go from, sorry, you create an estimate, you got an invoice that was just there. In QuickBooks Online, if you want to be able to go from estimates to invoices, you have to turn that feature on. Form styles. We don't have full 100% flexibility in terms of designing our forms or our invoices, but there are several options in terms of templates, colors, um, uh, columns, description, header, footer, all that stuff we can customize a little bit through form style. So in QuickBooks um, Desktop, they used to call it templates. In QuickBooks Online, they call it form style. Estimates are non-posting transactions. They are used to create a precursor to an invoice. They are there to possibly obtain an approval from a customer uh, to sell them something or to provide a particular service. Then once the client approves the estimate and we create the product, uh, sorry, sell the product or, create or, or perform the service, at that point we'll convert that into an invoice. Now all of our transactions related to customers are going to be grouped and organized in the customer center. We access the customer center by clicking on the left navigation bar, clicking on customers, and then we're going to see all the transactions related to customers inside of the customer center including the money bar. The money bar in the customer center, it's a, a quick shortcut to um, only show the transactions that are highlighted there. So if I click on the open transactions in the orange section of the money bar, it will take me just to those open invoices. Okay, you can also get similar information related to the customers by clicking on the transactions button on the left navigation bar and then clicking on sales. Now, the difference is when I go to customer center, everything is organized and grouped by customer. When I go to sales, all sales transactions are sort of dumped into a single screen. There's no customer grouping. I would have to use filters to, to create grouping or a particular um, filter to only see a certain transactions type. Now, delayed charge and delayed credits, these are also non-posting non transactions as we mentioned before and these are there to um, keep track of something that you're going to invoice to the client in the future maybe you want to do a delayed charge for an hour worth of work or something that you did in the middle of the month but you don't want to invoice them yet but you want to keep track of um, things that you need to invoice that would be a delayed uh, a delayed charge or if you want to give a client a credit of some sort um, for some work performed during the month or some overage of or something they prepaid or something like that, you can do a delayed credit and then later on you can post that delayed credit into a credit memo at the end of the month. So it's recommended if you are going to be keep tracking of different services you're providing during a particular time period, but you want to wait until the end of that time period to actually issue an invoice with all those activities, that's what the delayed charge or delayed credit would be. Now, an invoice is the actual document in which we create a sale and also have an accounts receivable or have money that's owed to us. So through an invoice, we create a sale and we tell QuickBooks our client owes us the money. You will still have to do one more step, which is actually receiving the payment against the, the invoice. 
okay the payment itself um, you, you're not gonna put any details in the payment in terms of what the client is paying for a payment has to be tied to an invoice the invoice contains the products and services that we sold to the client with descriptions with dates with amounts the payment just all it does is it closes the invoice and then it puts the money either in the bank or in the positive on, in on the positive funds so you can group them together uh, with multiple deposits then we have our credit memo our credit memo is how we lower the amount our clients owes, owe us on open invoices and then the refund would be for us to pay the client cash or check or pay the client money uh, because we're taking a return and we're not going to uh, charge it against an open invoice or use it to credit an open invoice we're actually going to pay the client out so that's the difference a credit memo affects my accounts receivable a refund does not and a sales receipt it's an invoice and a payment combined into a single transaction so for example in an invoice I put all my customers information I pick and choose the items that I'm going to sell them but I don't put any information about how the client paid in a payment I don't put any information about what the client bought from me I'm just going to put information about how the client paid and what account they paid to fast forward to a sales receipt it's a combination between the two is all the information about what I sold them plus how they paid into a single transaction so think of a sales receipt as, as an invoice and a payment into one and a sales receipt does not affect accounts receivable where an invoice and a payment does um, in terms of credit memo versus refund think of credit memo as the as the contra invoice or the counterpart of the invoice and think of, think of the refund receipt as the contra or the counterpart of the sales receipt so this refund receipt is the counterpart of the sales receipt credit memo is the counterpart of invoice perfect okay now you can enable online invoices through the settings which basically means when you when you create an invoice you email it to the client and the client instead of getting just a PDF email they will get what's called an online invoice and they're gonna see the invoice in this portal in which they can add notes they can message and they can conversate with you back and forth maybe if they're disputing a line item in the invoice or they're not 100% sure how you came up with the charges or whatever excuses customers typically give to delay payment um, they'll do all the they can do the messaging there and then you can respond to your client and you have a single place in which you can attach information or chat with your client about a particular invoice now if I have payments enabled the client can click on payments put the credit card information and then pay you directly now how do we enable that um, well payments we have to go through the whole application process of, of being able to pay, get paid with a credit card or with a bank transfer or something like that but if you want to do online invoices you have to click on the gear button click on sales and then in here you get to choose whether the client is going to do online invoices plain text PDF invoices and so forth if you want to get paid online then you definitely want to do an online invoice okay and you can you can turn off or on the PDF as you wish okay if so you can still use online invoice plus a PDF you can do both if you want to okay then when you actually go invoice the client and you're gonna send them an online invoice if you have payments enabled I can choose whether or not I want that client to pay me online because if I don't want if I'm already you know I have a very thin deal where I'm not making a lot of money already and I don't want to pay the bank fees or something like that then I, I would not give the client the choice of paying online so you still have the choice once you enable uh, payments you have the choice to email them do online invoicing but not get paid online even if you wanted to now when the customer gets the email it looks like this it says hey you owe so-and-so company hundred and twelve dollars if you want to pay online um, click on view invoice now they're gonna see the screen no password required they just have to click on that email if payments is not enabled right that means that you have not set up your merchant account through QuickBooks online um, 
they're not gonna see the pay now button or they're gonna see a blurry pay now button okay the client from here can print the invoice or they can save it save the PDF somewhere in the computer if they want to okay once that payment is marked paid in QuickBooks your customer will no longer see that amount when they log back in if it's completely paid it will say paid and it will say zero that way the customer doesn't accidentally pay you twice okay now to enable payments you have to go into the settings menu click on payments and then you're going to click where it says learn more and then you're going to go through the application process this is a credit application process into it is a financial institution as well and it, they take a risk or like every bank on processing a credit card payment okay so you have to go to the application process you click on learn more you choose whether or not you want the free account that charges a little bit of a higher uh, fee or the $20 a month payment plan uh, that uh, like gives you a much lower per transaction charge and, and all those rates will show up um, once you do that application process okay you fill out all the information within 24 hours sometimes 48 hours you will get an answer saying it's approved it's not approved call this number if you need to know why and then you have to make sure you put all your uh, banking information there okay if you are coming from QuickBooks uh, desktop you have to make sure that you connect your existing payments account so you don't have to apply again you can just click on connect you put your information there and it it translates it over if you were using go payments or if you're using online merchant payments without any quickbooks at all but it, it is an active account you can also connect it to here um, as well okay so when you go connect an account that's already existing you have you have to log in you click on link account it'll ask you for your username and password for quickbooks online and then to verify that it's connected it would actually not say you know learn more or apply anymore when you're in that setting it will actually give you your merchant id it will give you other options like changing the bank account in which the money is going into and so forth that's all going to be here and that's how you make sure that your end customer gets that pay now button so they can pay online okay now your customer itself when they go pay they're going to have two choices they can either pay through a credit card which is going to have you the merchant pay two to three percent on on the on the on that payment based on what type of credit card or if they pay through bank the fee is a lot smaller it's only 50 percent uh, it's 50 cents for ach bank to bank transfer okay and then once the client pays you it will give them a confirmation and it will also email them letting them know hey you pay this client this this much and you will also get an email letting you know that your client paid you okay then when your client logs in again to to attempt to pay it again it will prohibit them it won't allow them to pay again because it's already been marked paid so it's a good nice control mechanism to make sure your clients don't uh, don't pay you twice now the real nice thing is once the clients pay you quickbooks online automatically behind the scenes marks that invoice paid so there's no need for us to go in there and sync payments to quickbooks or receive the payment in quickbooks quickbooks is smart enough to know that if they paid you through the quickbooks system you, that invoice has been paid okay now for recurring transactions if you wanted to have if you have for example a landscaping business that has a fixed contract where they charge a fixed dollar amount per month or something or per week or something like that what you can do is you can create a sales receipt in QuickBooks and then click on the little button that says make recurring when you click on make recurring you get to choose whether whether it's going to be processed through a credit card um, or some other way um, or PayPal or whatever but if you do a recurring sales receipt and you enter the credit card information QuickBooks won't even ask you or prompt you to charge your client it will do it all behind the scenes for you right as part of maybe an agreement you have with your client to charge them a fixed monthly fee 